I've been talking a lot about making decisions to change your life. And, you know, we all are at different degrees or levels of being able to do that. Now, what I'm doing here is, and I'm going to give you an example of something. Okay. You know, you're supposed to shake up nut milks because they can have like a, you know, solids that settle out of them. Well, I got this out of the fridge and I started shaking it and apparently I had not put that uh, lid on well enough the last time I used it and the milk started coming out, ran down, oh, let me get some more here, ran down the stove, behind the stove, the oven handles, onto the floor, all down the milk carton. And there actually was a time in my life where I had the attitude of, oh, this kind of thing always happens to me. Um, do you know people who have that kind of attitude? It's like, there's always something happening to me. Um, it's never my fault. It's always someone else's fault or something else's fault. Or my life is just like that. These kind of things happen to me. Well, thank heavens, I have made a change in my life. I've made a lot of changes. But one of the significant changes that I've made is I've gotten rid of that kind of victim mentality. Like I'm a, a victim of, I don't know, karma or whatever you want to say. That, um, you know, I once knew somebody who used to share their father whenever something would go wrong or there was a hint of... Um, maybe negative news or something, his reaction was, what now? What now? You know, he sort of had this negative attitude of, um, there's always going to be negative things that happen. And life was something that was against him. And what I wanted to say is, you know, there are, there are circumstances in our lives that are difficult and we cannot do anything about them. You know, this sort of thing does happen, right? But how can you change things? All right, the one thing in the example with the milk, my reaction this morning was, oh, golly, I must not have screwed that cap on tight enough last time I used it. I'll have to be more careful next time. Rather than, oh, this kind of thing always happens, you know, or this sort of thing always happens to me. No, I don't feel that way. But there are people, I got some milk in my shoe too. <laughs> there are people who that's kind of how they see their lives, as everything is always happening to me, you know? Um, and now let me go wash my hands. And the thing is that you don't have to have that sort of view about life. You really don't. Um, you know, uh, you hear about mindfulness all the time. Part of mindfulness, actually, I don't want to turn anyone off to mindfulness, but it's, from what I understand, from what I've read, you know, it's almost like a Zen kind of thing, which is observing what's going on, but not having to have a reaction to it, you know? So I did not have to use a bunch of emotional energy over that milk spilling all over, or, you know, what happens to you? Maybe someone cuts you off in traffic. Maybe, maybe your kid spills something all over. Um, you know, maybe, who knows? Um, all, kind, all the little things in life that can happen. 
you do have a choice what kind of attitude to have. The thing is, though, it does take practice. You know, like things can happen and it may take you a little while to get to a place where you can observe what's happening and not have to have one of these, oh, what now? Not again, kind of um, responses to it. So the being mindful starts off with noticing what's going on. Like for example, with the milk, if my reaction had been like, you know, a way to start being mindful would be to, for me to say to myself, wait a minute, okay, the milk spilled out, I, it's making me upset, all right, let me take a moment and just calm down, okay, the next time something like this, a similar situation happens to me, I'm going to try to slow down my reaction and respond rather than react to the situation. Um, I'm gonna try to give it some thought. The point is that that reaction of, oh no, you gotta nip that in the bud. Um, oh my goodness. Who here has watched the Andy Griffith Show? If you've never seen it, it is a real gem from the 1950s and 60s. And Barney Fife um, used to say, what was it? Was he the um, assistant sheriff or something? Deputy, Deputy Barney Fife. He'd say, nip in the bud, nip it in the bud. <laughs> well, that means cut it off right when it's starting so that it doesn't bloom out into a full bad attitude. Anyway, um, and you know, it can take time to work on this because you have to realize when it's happening and take a step back and make a choice. And eventually that will become second nature. And just like this morning when that milk went all over and oh, I'm gonna have to run my my flip-flop under the water when I'm done here because it's a little sticky now um, but you know after a while just like this morning I'm able to observe up oh, this happened next time I'll be more careful putting the lid on now let me clean it up it's sort of a non-issue you know um, well anyway let's let's make some coffee so I've got <laughs> I've got all these drawers pulled out. Oh, you know what? I was sent a sample of, yes, double espresso Chiaro, which I've had before. My, my favorite is the double espresso Squirrel, which is a much more intense um, double espresso. Double espresso, 2.7 ounces. Single espresso, 1.35 ounces. Anyway, um, so, oh, golly, you know what, last night I unplugged this so that I could use my toaster, yeah, my, um, electric wiring here is not strong enough to be able to run the toaster and the coffee machine. Anyway. So, um, where was I? Oh, yes. So, um, I don't know. Completely lost my train of thought. Something about double espresso scuro and double espresso chiaro. And, um, this is a less intense version of the double espresso scuro. It's interesting because when I make the double espresso scuro, usually it starts sinking down into the milk with kind of little dark streamers, but the Chiaro seems to be more floating on the milk. And, mm, okay. 
I'm looking forward to drinking this and I'll tell you why. Yesterday I had my flu shot and you know, when you're over 65, they give you a stronger version of the flu shot. And oh, last night my arm was sore, still a little sore now, but kind of felt miserable all night. <laughs> You know, I mean, I took Tylenol, I took Advil, but, you know, sometimes you just uh, have a reaction to a shot. So, I'm doing a little better today, but I sure will appreciate this. Coffee always seems to perk me up. Okay. Oh, what, 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 what are you watching at? Okay, you know what? Let's just walk over there because, um, here, Grayson, show me. What is it, puppy? Because yesterday there was a possum out in the daytime, and that's what he was barking at. Okay. All right. Well, you ready to play football? Okay. Oh, all right. My next door neighbor was opening their sliding glass door. That's what he was getting all excited about. No possums today. All right, so, oh yes, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to having this coffee so it can perk me up. I'm using the double wall glass mug. Oh, is, you know, I may need to microwave this some because I had a lot of milk in here. I had been thinking of making um, closer to an eight ounce cup, but, oh shoot, I should have run it through again. Well, sometimes when I get to talking, I kind of um, forget what I'm doing. You ever have that happen to you? <laughs> well, anyway, so I'm gonna heat this up a little bit more. Oh, I wanna get some of that coffee into me make me feel better, kind of perk me up some. And alrighty, that's probably good enough. And you know, if you've had a baby, you probably know that when you heat something in the microwave for the baby, they always tell you to stir it really well because you can end up with pockets of real hot liquid or solids and real cold ones. And you know, you don't want to burn the baby. Same with your coffee. Mm. Oh, yes. You have a good day. And you know, think about what I was saying. Um, you may not be able to change anything around you. But there are some things inside of you that you can change if you try to observe how you react or respond to things and make a choice. Is that how I want to be in this situation? If not, take a step back, take a few deep breaths, calm yourself down and think, what are my choices here?